So hello and welcome to episode 28 of Nightmare Down Under, the Gear City Let's Play, where we play on Nightmare Difficulty Down Under in Australia. We started in 1900, now it is April 1959, and so we just um, put the new uh, components for the new long wheelbase platform into development, and we also have three more months left on the overhaul of our kangaroo uh, sedan, which is going to get their uh, last overhaul before its replacement. But first, we're going to replace all our long wheelbase uh, cars, so the full-size sedan, the ute, and the pickup truck. So in terms of sales, the new Wombat has now some missed sales and we had a lot of uh, sales for the pickup truck so I suspect that's a bit of a market exit here and some other sales are also vastly increased so let's check um, the branches and this could also be an effect or partially an effect of course of our recondition that we just finished. Um, in the last episode, so the biggest change in compact cars. No, there's still the Benley Joyful, and this was our main competitor, which instantly is not selling. It's just on the market, so they're taking orders, but they're not fulfilling it. So we have 3,000 that we can produce. So, more line in Melbourne. <clears throat> Plenty of more kangaroo so I think that was one thing that we were missing the uh, we had pretty worn out branches so that's going to be pretty helpful so one two kangaroo a which we can slowly sunset no I think we can let both kangaroos as they are our dingo still has three months uh, more of life in it in terms of reserves and then that's gone Grand Kangaroo to eight. Wallaroo four thousand. Emu four thousand four hundred. We'll probably get some reactions from other competitors. Our Thylacine, our sports car, is also doing reasonably well to 1,200. So Sydney is almost full. We need 2,000 flatbacks. So Sydney is pretty full. Two lines left and 3,000 wombats. Yeah, we all just did that. So Melbourne has 10 lines available. The question is what to do with Brisbane. We're probably going to get a lot of extra sales over the next years since uh, we just uh, we will start revamping basically our entire production lineup over the next uh, eight or nine years. So simply keeping Brisbane as it is, um, our cash flow is uh, just excellent anyway. So that made a big difference. So more marketing and uh, the a reconditioning. Okay, so we're slowly building up reserves. That's great. <clears throat> so we can phase out both kangaroos. Actually need more kangaroo A's. That's 1,100, probably. Yeah, let's leave it on, on that level. Kangaroo A's. Uh, 100 less. Uh, Alexis, 100 less. Uh, both are gone. 4,300 Wallaroos. So something like this. 4,800 emus. So this almost reverberates. 
over one turn. The change that we made to the scene is fine. Flatback and Warmat are also fine and lets them simply build up reserves that we can actually cope with another surge. So Kangaroo is gone and uh, also Kangaroo is uh, ready. So the last face left of those. Last turn for the Dingo too. Otherwise, so we're finally building some reserves again. And so we can put both Kangaroos into production. We have our unit cost, but actually not that not that terrible. And the, <laughs> the um, higher spec car is actually uh, cheaper to make than the lower spec car. That's a think of funny way of um, inflation at work. So if we sold the L for this price, that's a good price. So that's the lower spec. How good is it? 48, so better than what they have. So we own them on price. And then, so the low part here is 27. So then this here the lower part is one nine two two so we can actually can make this a bit cheaper two seven because this is then the still two seven but it reaches further down one two seven two six yeah two four that's so that's all hard to beat and here we have one nine. So these are incredibly cheap. And people can afford them. Two four. And here we have as upper band two two as lower band, so a slight overlap. And yeah, the other one is slightly better. And these two can can go. Now let's put them into production. And I think suddenly we're running out of space in Sydney. Funny enough. So I'm moving the Thylacine away. So, because I'm going to need many more. So Alexis, I think, are fine. Two, three. And I need way more base models. So I need how many thylacines? Yeah, two, two, two. This goes to Melbourne. That was Brisbane. So Melbourne gets this because the thylacine has completely unique um components so there is no synergy whereas it makes sense to produce the both kangaroos in the same spot at least they share the underpinnings the the chassis uh one eight so something like this since we're going to sell them to a lot more people So we have four left in Sydney and six left in Melbourne. So Brisbane is slowly actually being pretty useful. Need 2,700 wombats. Uh, 3,700 wombats. So a bit more than these excesses. The others are still fine. And emu, emu for two. That was a bit optimistic too. Wallaroo. Now let's make a few more emus and a few more, few less wallaroos. Just now, wallaroos are still fine. So dingo is going to be gone, and I can stop production of the both kangaroos and the dingo as well. So we're running a tight ship in terms of models. So the oldest that we have is our full-size sedan. 
which may be due for some overhauls as well. How is it holding up and does it have much competition? And actually we don't, since it's a car that we start to re-engineer in five months, so it simply has to endure. And it's actually holding up reasonably well against the belt, which isn't selling either. Alright, so that's that. What does the press think about our new two kangaroos? So the 1.4L. The latest sedan to hit the market, and uh, we may have hit it out of the park with this vehicle. So, speed-wise, it's certainly as good as most sedans out on the market today. 60 horsepower is a good fit, and uh, 35 seconds, 0 to 100. Torque is also nice, but a bit more than average. And it is perfect on the track, but good enough for most people. They're shocked about the interior. Cargo space is substandard. Build quality is great. Reliability isn't. Fuel economy is astonishing, so the engine is really good. It isn't best in terms of safety, but otherwise great. Top model. It isn't the fastest, but as good as most sedans on the market. I think, yeah, here, the, the engine is much larger, but not that more powerful. Torque is brilliant, and they like the handling better. It, it's not going to win any awards in terms of comfort, but it meets what you need. It's not exactly roomy. That's probably something that will change with the next generation. Put some effort into the quality. Well engineered to be dependable. It's not truly green, but still a very good fuel uh, consumption, and also nicely safe so otherwise they uh, s sort of like the 1.4 and they really like the 2.3 so that worked then let's sell more cars okay farewell dingo it was worth a try and so the kangaroo a sells as expected and the lx sells much better much higher so yeah, good that we have some spare capacity. <clears throat> so the L gets a few more and the LX I need to make 2,800. So we have four lines in Sydney and seven in Melbourne. I need to make more Wallaroos. Grand Kangaroo is still holding up nicely, so no Big deal, but it will get H penalties reasonably soon. Flat pack 1.8. And Wombat maybe a tad less. So four months till we get our new new, new platform. <clears throat> So no missed sales, so that worked. 2-6 Wombat. So sedan sales are stable and high. So let's check the competition. Even more Wallaroos. And Grand Kangaroo is great, so how have sedan sales changed? And I think I'm going to Sydney because there we have a couple more. Yeah, so we see the old ones um, having exited. So that's the green and blue line, and our new ones uh, with a slight dip, but I think still very nice. And we push the Kaya Lily Prenel Rev uh, a little bit down and belts and the others don't really seem to exist again i suspect due to supply issues but they still s uh, steal nominal sales from us why do we have a negative cash flow of one million? Oh, tax month so we have six million of taxes so that's a good problem to have
So sedan sales have slightly picked up, so even more LXs. Are we making a profit? Uh, ever so slightly. So we can probably increase prices a little bit. And still make a few more LXs in Sydney. Four eight emus. Otherwise, things look great. Three thousand wombats. Two months till the platform is done. Cash flow of eleven point five million. All right, this looks fine all the way around. Nothing excessive one way or another. Eight million in cash flow. So a few less wombats, two seven. That's fluctuating quite a bit. Kangaroos are fine. Nothing wrong with a few reserves. A few emu heads are dropped. Three two. What's with the utility market. There's a new entry, the hash, I suspect. No, it seems to have been available. Oh, the, oh, the Apeson is new. Difficult to say when they don't sell, but both the others were hit. They are somewhat better, but yeah, this, this platform is getting a new overhaul anyway, so no big deal. Research complete. No contracts for us. Best compact car in the entire world, our Wombat. New, ra new racing series, Australian Grand Touring and Australian Touring Champion Car Series. So that's uh, certainly something we're going to enter. At least have a good hard look at what that is. So it's a sports car, which is cheap. And a sports car, so with no engine limit and one with... Um, Eight liter engines. Okay, so two for sports. So we, we have a sports car. So let's see what enters, or who enters rather. And otherwise, undeterred of that, let's develop a new generation of our Grand Kangaroo. On a new platform, which is longer. Still on a on a ladder frame since there are two more work vehicles coming on. Getting a 2.5 liter inline six with 96 horsepower and a new two speed automatic with overdrive. Gets a new body. And that's going to be the trend setter if you want. So this is what we had. This is too small. This, so it should have at least four doors. This has lots of, it doesn't have that much space inside. This is the old one. This is the new the new one, sort of, I think. That's too small. That's the old one. This is huge. Probably too huge. Probably a bit of a mean thing. Yeah, 1,300. So this was, I think, what we had or something like that. And this is this is what we had. So this is... Yeah, if it had more interior space, and would use it, but it doesn't. It should have some interior space. I think this one looks a bit old-fashioned. This one could be it. The Broham 9797. Or this one. I think this is reasonably new. 
1080, 1098, so similar. Yeah, so something like this. I wish I would have this full compact. I'm not sure why I didn't. These also look nice. Is this the same style as this one? Yeah, I think to an extent. Now this is probably too small. 900, yes. 869. This has one one that's actually the, the larger one, but it doesn't really matter that much. So this one is basically the same thing, just with different um, door handles. So there was nothing else up here that's in the similar style, right? I think this is just as it has just two doors. This one, the Stockholm, is this the same thing? Yes, so the Stockholm. So this is the, just a matter of general looks. So Stockholm, this was the only one, I think. I think this is too small. Yeah, that's not what we want. That's what we want. So Stockholm, this. Or this. This looks a bit more bulbous, which isn't necessarily bad. And less with less ornaments. This has this, these odd cr chrome fins on the front, um, on the hood, or on the on the sides. <coughs> So let's take this one. Or oh, the one the others have major advantages in terms of aero. So this has 0.46. And the Stockholm has I don't think speed is that important. So let's take... Mm. Yeah, that's, this, is, this is going to be it. Um, are we actually aiming for the upper middle class with our current pricing structure? Let's just double check that, because we might not. So it will be a bit more expensive. No, this is middle class. So, this, so we're going here for middle class as well. Might might think of a another trim at some point when we have a more modern engine with less power. So this would be the upper end of the trim, but anyway. So going from this it has these raked windshields. Yeah, so that's the Marathon 1953. So we could go for this, but I think we are past past this look probably. And it's more like Yeah, more straightforward. All right, then we go for middle class. Fuel consumption is optimal, so we had a good good choice there. So top speed 140 and fuel consumption 9.2. Can we get it to 43? Not that easily though. They don't well, they care about safety. Here we are, 43. Nice. I think here we can spend some time because this is going to stay that way. 
for a fair bit. Comfortability testing. One, five, two, three. Yeah, this adds a little bit of extra luxury. It doesn't do that much. Market demographic doesn't make the specific rating better. So we leave it out. So otherwise the sliders are fine. 43 is I think an excellent, excellent number. Duration, that's that's expensive. So how much extra time do we have? So I'm not worried about the flatback, I'm worried about the emu. So when do when does the emu get the age penalties for the chassis? So it sits on the L4, 280 L4, 1948, 1963. So it's three years till we need the new car, or we need two new cars. So that's so 18, 18 months or less is what we want to aim for. So 18 months is 3.1 million, 17 months, 3.8 million. So 18 months, I think, is fine. And then we have another 18 months for the uh, emu for for the ute and this is probably going to this here is probably going to be the most expensive one anyway so 43 yeah that's that's the limit and so this looks great material cost 1.5 the old one was 972 so it's going to be more expensive anyway but i'm still sticking with with middle uh class so currently we're just very very cheap with with everything guess the new six cylinder engine shows so that's the grand kangaroo b and let's build it 18 months and otherwise that's all there is to do for us in the meantime it's just one big car project at a time so, new year, 1960. Can make a few less. Yeah, so the increase in price brought the sales down. So let's just make them a bit cheaper again and still reduce production. So 1.6 and 2.6. Six. Pickup is fine, Philocene is fine, Emu is fine, Wallaroo for one. Try to find some sweet spot. And Grand Kangaroo is also okay. Let's check uh, last year's sales and company stats. Always interesting what happens on the market. Okay, 3000 LX, Kangaroo LX. L is fine. Emu, 3-3. So... Who did we make the top 50? Emu and Wallaroo. Very nice. Still in the all time sales. The Emu is still in the all time sales. 3, 4, 4, the old one. Things haven't really changed here. Slowly dropping, but not that much. Company directory. So, biggest sales. So, yeah, first two companies broke the million. We are still on the first page 80, 81 million profit so that's neat Apeson might be gone by the end of the year and belt isn't that looking that brilliant either Michigan Motors not sure whether this is a genuine loss or whether this is one of the marks that they bought and others make insane profits billion and some of the independents also some nice profits who's going to be gone belt 
Hill Woman. So Hill Man, I guess. And here a couple more. Burnt all. Well, uh, they're probably still hang hanging in there. So not not many companies actually making. No, that's that's ordered by cash. So we still have. Uh, one, two, two and a half pages of company making at least slight losses. So if we look at what we achieved, yeah. So lots in the green. A few dips. I think there's this new competitor that we got, Kaya Lili. But otherwise, um, I think we are holding ourselves uh, quite nicely there. There's another micro van that exists. There's a natural gas fuel, which we can't design, and the auto gas, which we can't design. Not sure that we want to. What's the body type demands, actually? So a sedan, full size sedan at the top. Ute as well. Sports up there. Pickup, pickup truck is on its way up. Well, that's cool. 2 plus 2. Standard coupe which we don't have at the moment, I think. Compact car is also on its way up. And yeah, van touring and some other stuff. No, what I wanted is racetrack. So there is the Australian Grand Turning Series. We have some competition. We're all way better. So I suspect if we enter with our Thylacine, with all of 110 horsepower, there is not going to happen that much, but anyway, let's let's just start. Focus. I think it's more on on development, so we get some extra. Uh, ah, it's a team, new team growth. Ah, it's team to our mark. So target team size, smaller teams. Yeah. Simply see what what happens. That we focus on car development, and I think it will be sort of horrible anyway, since it's way underpowered. But anyway, let's just uh, race for a little bit. Because the other one, I think we get these monsters, yes. And that's not what I'm interested in. And here we get a little bit extra popularity through some cheap uh, racing. If we're not in the middle of revamping our entire product lineup, then we can think of... Okay, contracts completed. Okay, that, that, that's the uh, racing team. If we're not in the middle of revamping our entire lineup, then we might actually build a dedicated race car um, at the moment, I don't really feel the need. So, 3,000 Wombats. So I have to get the impression I'm slowly increasing um, production overall in, in terms of everything. Some more Kangaroo LX. Mm, yeah, some more Kangaroo LXs. Two, two flatbacks. Can make a few more thylacines. That's the new production line. Four thousand emus, wow. Few more walrus. So I think I'm beginning to be happy that I have Brisbane just just in case uh, sales really take off. Thirty million cash flow missed sales. Wombat Australis flatback. I suspect someone went just. Bust. Apeson is gone. Apeson is gone. 
So for instance, there is no, yeah, there was the Apeson, uh, at least technically on sale. And the belt claymore belt is also gone. Belt is gone as well. So we just lost two competitors. We only have Australis ourselves and one competitor, Kelly Lilly, in all places. They bought Hopsy. And we have Michigan Motors left in Sydney. So I suspect now it is essential that I have Brisbane as the third factory. That's a nice month. All right, so we need 4,500 Wombats. We need 4,000 Kangaroo LXs. That's the entire upper range of the market. We need 3,000 flatbacks. And I have to move the Grand Kangaroo somewhere else. So Thylacine is good. And I need 5,000 Grand Kangaroos. So 3,000 more. Yeah, and that this is Brisbane. Can I make 3,000 kangaroos in Brisbane? Barely. So this is borderline ridiculous, but I suspect we'll get some competition at some point. I think that's that, that's a once in a lifetime occurrence that you lose essentially two out of four existing competitors and the fourth one doesn't really count. Okay, so we can make 1,000 less Grand Kangaroo A's. Can make a few more emus if we can. We can. We can keep a bit of drop in Thylacine. 1,900. Check the market for sports cars. Ours simply dropped and theirs become, became better. Not sure why. Ours cost half of, of theirs. Flatback is good. More kangaroo A's. Uh, um, I'm 1.4s. 2000. going to increase price for sedans. And one bite is fine. 10.6 million in cash flow. I'm not sure whether this is us uh, out competing them or just stupid AI not getting their act together. Because they've been, I think, active on more than just your, the Australian market. New contracts, nothing for us. So we're slowly hanging in there. Can I make more 2.3 LXs? A few. Pickup truck is good. The Lucene is good. Emu is good. 3-8 Wallaroos, that's always all over the place. And Grand Kangaroos is adequate. Can I... So I have 0 in Sydney, 4 in Brisbane and 4 in Melbourne. What's our unit cost in Brisbane? I think pretty terrible. Yeah, well, not, not that terrible actually. So let's see whether we get some competition at some point or whether this will be just a walk in the park. 
from now on. Issues with part supply, okay, so yeah. Not much we can do there. So still is a number of missed sales, so we have to increase things further. So one, two hundred more grand kangaroos. Four thousand two hundred wallaroos. Two thousand five hundred thylacines. Flat bag is fine. I need more. Okay. I'm going to produce kangaroo A in Melbourne as well. And one bat is fine for the time being. Ten months till our new full size sedan. No missed sales, so that's a good thing. So thylacine sales are over the place, 2-2, two, two. not sure why that is. Otherwise, yeah, slowly building up some reserves. How many taxes did we pay? 7.8 million. How's our pension fund doing? 19.9, okay, so needs some more injection again and simply doubling it. Let's have a twice our li liabilities. So that's then five million more. Let's see how that works. Racing report, three points. So I guess we don't stand a chance against the rest. A few more emus, otherwise we are doing okay. So let's check. Racetrack, current results. Yeah, so we are nicely lost. They have much incredibly better cars. So we are probably just the laughing stock of the field. Okay, some more pensions. Can I actually? Have them to pay some. No, 25. If I have this to zero, 23. So, 39 Kangaroo LX. And two and one nine, so five hundred less kangaroo A. So I'm stopping production in the wrong factory in Acros, otherwise we're slowly building up reserves. Full size sedan in seven. We just broke the one billion in cash reserves.
New contract requests. Let's check whether we can sell them some of our pickup trucks. So best sedan, best compact car, best pickup truck. Nothing really. So do they... Ah, they want a diesel. And that's the US Army, they want to pick a truck. Ah, with with more with more torque. 182, how much torque do we have with our new engine? Hmm, 177. But that should be then wor working after one round of uh, improvement. All right, so new pickup truck in five. So monthly racing report, maybe just, yeah, stay one more year and then call it quits. So I can reduce some things, so Grand Kangaroo to four seven. So that's like 300 less. It's so one less line in Brisbane. Wallaroo 4000. Emu 35. Philistine is good, flat back is fine, sedans are slowly, a few more, a few less LX, and the Wombat 4000, so let's check sales, that should be new record sales, and also record profits, ah, not that much, we're simply producing more, but I think the this speaks for itself. So, the full size sedan, 50,000 in the top seller. That's at the lower part of the second page. Company directory. So, still two companies, more than 1 million sales. We should be comfortable on the first page. Yep, the second largest of the independents. 110 profits, that's I think fantastic. Yep, yeah, so we are the in the top 10 of most profits in absolute terms. Who's making losses? So farmhand looks like not being longer from the wood, or they bought another mark. The other ones here might just have bought marks, and so the big consolidation wave seems to be through. If they didn't buy a mark, then they are also toast. Who is running out of cash? I think Shuva might be gone. Burnt all probably also. Bumgard maybe as well. But I think the market is slowly consolidating worldwide. As it happened in real life, so this is actually pretty close uh, to that. So contracts complete, yearly sales. We can make auto gas cars, but I don't think uh, these are particularly popular. Sedan sales have picked up. Let's check the market because that's a bit suspicious. So 4-2 Kangaroo LX, 500 more. And 2-4 kangaroo, so 700 more kangaroo A. Eh? 
L. Flat bag is fine. Thalassine is fine. 4,300 emus. Do we have another market exit? Hmm. Running out of stuff again. So that's 450 less. So that should be right. Wallaroo 3200. And Grand Kangaroo. Whoa. Grand Kangaroo. S thousand more. I can't do that. That's another market exit, I suspect. Some more Grand Kangaroos in Melbourne. Now, every, everyone exit, exiting all markets? Where is... Was there someone before? I should be able to see that. This looks a bit like a market exit, so who's left? No, I still, our two friends are still there. It's just Michigan Motors doesn't have a full-size sedan in the program. And Kaya Lily doesn't either. They just have fringe stuff here. So we only, we are the only compact car. No compact SUV, no compact van. They have a coupe. They have, uh, uh we have, yeah, they have a coupe, two utes. Both have fastbacks. No one has full-size sedans. No one has hatchbacks. Only two, two luxury sedans left. Three micro cars left. Congratulations. You picked an excellent um, market. Three minivans. Two Phaetons. They really pick, they have a brilliant um, focus on useless parts of the market or that no one wants to compete with our rock bottom prices. Three shooting brakes. Two roadsters. At least we have some competition in the sedan, but that's insanely expensive. Five station wagons. And three vans. Okay, so there are a couple holes in the market, but yeah. That's just borderline busy work for us. So I'm not going to jump on those opportunities. Just stick to what I've done so far. Okay. I leave the wombats as they are. A few less kangaroo, two hundred less kangaroo LXs. Rest looks great. New full size sedan next month, so that will probably increase demand again. Although not, not by that much, since we're not competing against things. So, to make 3,900 or 1,500 less. So, something like this. 4-3 Wombats, that seems to be a bit stable. This is a few more flatbacks, 3-2. I can't. Wallaroos are fine. And these are just reduced. So, new full-size sedan. I wonder whether we will get ever extra competition because we hadn't seen new companies because Kaya Lily just bought Hopesy. No contracts for us. Farmhand and motorcar licensed our pickup truck. 
Research complete. Garant Kangaroo B. Did we sell all of them? Yes, and then some. So Thelacine 1H. So I need 6,000 Grand Kangaroos of the B variant. Two five. Five thousand. Six thousand. So we need for, to sell it for a bit of a higher price. That and that's still middle class here. So that we because we have much higher unit costs. The old one had one other one had one six, the other one had one seven, but we have much more material costs, so the the manufacturing costs are going to be included. So I think that why this makes sense. The old one I think was just excessively cheap now at the end of its life cycle. It doesn't really make that much difference. So 6,300 potential and this has 5,700 potential. So I like to think we sort of use this to drive off competition. So we can stop the old Grand Kangaroo. So the oldest cars are now the, the Wallaroo and the emu, the, the ute, and we're going to produce a new emu. New platform, new engine, they also get the automatic gearbox, and it gets a new body, if we get one. Yep, so this actually has a nice uh, ute. Is it larger actually than the old one, 746? No, it's smaller. But we have to go with whatever they do, 750, 629, 627, so this is actually better. And it also looks like, I think, the one we chose. Let's just double check, it doesn't matter, but uh, I like to keep things consistent. No, ah, we actually chose this one. And there is no equivalent, so next time we choose the green one for the body. So new emu, new longer platform, bigger engine, automatic gearbox. Yeah, there is no equivalent. So then this is this one. Target demographic I think is fine. Fuel consumption is optimal. Good to here. Can we get it to 40? Here is 45. That's good. Then uh, they don't want safety, they want performance and dependability. Yeah, here we have 40. Nice. So, 1963 we get, uh, so 18, everything 18 months works. 3.6 million. So that um, we're getting, or not getting H penalties, and then we still have a flat back to go, but that's, I think, okay. Next round of penalties we would get for 1952 platform for the medium wheelbase. And that would be then 1967. So there we have plenty of time we get H penalties for our old medium platform. So there is no particular rush. Yeah, so 18 months, 3.6 million, and then we are well in time. I think all other sliders are where they should be. Yes, exactly at a tipping point. We don't get we, where we get more, get more performance, but we don't really need it, I think. So 40, 45, 40, 44 is good. Okay, so then that's our new Emu B. 
and let's build it. We can probably pull the old chassis out of yeah, production, so the old 1.9 meter. The two cylinder engine and the oldest gearbox, all other gearboxes are at least in use once. So let's reduce clutter. This one goes. This one goes. And this one goes. So who's still using the second oldest stuff? So that's just the emu and the flatback. That's the flatback. Ah, this has still the better kangaroo. And the second oldest gearbox, also the flatback. And that's something we have to develop then alongside the flatback. No, that have, we have to develop it now, a manual gearbox, so that it's ready when the flatback is ready. Good point, so let's do that. So it's a three-speed manual with overdrive. Of course, we don't put a automatic into our pickup truck. We might, but I don't want to. So simply redesign this. Yeah, three speed overdrive is fine. Nothing fancy. So pickup truck gets the 2.9 meter and our inline six. 13.5. And everything stuff is all over the place again. Top speed 173, fuel consumption 11.5. Towing 833. Ah, so this needs torque for towing. Because they think that that's the proxy that they need. So, top speed 140, yep, yeah, so pretty high top speed. Some good dependability. I think everything else is great. Yeah, reliability, I think, is something we should be after. Can we increase it a bit more? Not really. This is, I think, pretty cost efficient. So we can do it in 10 months' time. So that's ready. Hope we think about that. Because we have to think about that in the next episode where we see how well um, the new full-size sedan sells and then we're going to put the Ute onto the market. So see you then.